You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, Days fans, it's Belinda from Soap Dirt, and I'm here with a comings and goings update for you that is super exciting. We've got two fan favorite characters coming back to Salem, and they are long, long overdue. The reason they come back is a medical crisis, but still, I'm very happy to see Lonnie Price and Eli Grant for any reason at all. Before we jump into this casting news, though, please click subscribe so you don't miss a thing. All right. The first tidbit in this casting update, of course, is about Eli Grant and Lonnie Price returning. It has been a minute since 2023 that we saw either of them. And I think the last time around, we didn't even see them together. They were around separately. I think Lonnie was last around maybe mid-July 2023. That was when Abe Carver was the whole missing presumed dead thing, and then Crazy Nurse Whitley, all that. And then in late July, Lonnie had to go back to prison. And I think Eli was in and out during some of this. And anyway, uh, Lonnie had gotten a short furlough because of her dad's issues. And then she had to go back to prison. But next week, Lonnie Price and Eli Grant are together and they are back in Salem and she is out of prison. I'm assuming the twins are going to be with them, Jules and Carver. So they return the week of February 26 to see Paulina Price, who just had surgery for her thyroid cancer. If you recall back when Abe had his whole missing presumed dead crisis and Lonnie was back in town for it, she and Eli mentioned she had six months left on her prison term. But then it was like around the end of the year, Paulina got a call from Lonnie saying her release had been delayed. So now we have two two big occasions that bring Lonnie and her husband Eli back to Salem. First is that her sister Chanel Dupree just got married to her hunky rich fiance Johnny Demera. So now she is Chanel Dupree Demera. And the second thing is that Paulina has thyroid cancer. Of course, she just had surgery to remove a sizable tumor. So far, she can't talk yet because of the incision and the stitches. But then she had some sort of medical crisis in the last moments of a recent episode. She realized something was going on. She gestured for them to get the doctor. So they got Kayla and we'll find out more later this week. But next week, Lonnie and Eli are in Salem. In the weekly spoilers, they say Eli and Lonnie are back on Thursday, February 29th. But there's a couple of pretty credible websites that I usually trust for news that say they are back Monday, the 26th. I don't think so. I think those sites are wrong. And maybe they were meaning to say the week of the 26th and just miswrote it. So the one confirmed spoiler we do have for them is for Thursday. Maybe they'll pop up before them. On Tuesday, February 27th, though, Kayla Brady delivers very upsetting news to Chanel and Abe while Paulina is resting. So I wonder if this is bad news about her cancer prognosis. It could be. I mean, if they are indeed showing up on the 29th, that would make sense for them to get the bad news Tuesday. And then by Thursday, more family is in town. Also, next week, we have some teen scene action. Holly Jonas is awake at last from her drug overdose induced coma. On Tuesday, the 27th, Johnny Damaris spends some time at the bedside of his stepsister, encouraging her recovery. Then on Wednesday, Wednesday, the 28th, Nicole and EJ are so excited when Holly finally wakes up. Then Friday, March 1st, we have Holly asking her mom, Nicole, and her stepdad, EJ, how she wound up in that coma. So I really hope that doesn't mean she has forgotten what happened that night, because if she does not remember New Year's Eve, Tate could still be blamed for her medical crisis, even though he is completely innocent of any wrongdoing. And speaking of how she wound up in a coma, we have more Tate Black scenes next week. On Wednesday, the 28th, Tate gets FaceTime with his parents, Brady Black and Teresa Donovan. And the spoilers say they try to make amends with him. Maybe those letters he sent have them really worried. And then more of Tate on Friday, March 1st, when he is moved out of the juvie facility into a halfway house. Looks like it's going to be near Salem, far away from that juvenile psych facility where he had been remanded. 
And there are two new faces in Salem this week on Days of Our Lives, but they are in a blink or miss it moment. So later this week, Julie's back to the burned up Horton house and we see some flashbacks of Horton family. So the writers at Days came up with some new scenes from way back in the day. So these are flashbacks that are newly created. I don't know exactly how you would word that. Anyway, they're not old, old episode flashbacks. They are new episodes of the past. There we go. So they're going to be Tom Horton and Alice Horton that we're going to see with new actors in the role and they look to be in their like maybe mid 20s. This all comes up when Leo Stark begins asking Julie about the family that came before her and she tells him about Alice and Tom. And also someone finds a vintage box in the park same day. I think it has something to do with them because in the new flashbacks, Tom and Alice are having a romantic outing in the park. So maybe they left something there for future generations to find. And speaking of Leo, we are still waiting on a return date for Judith Chapman as Leo's crazy mom, Diana Cooper. With all that John Black Pond stuff being churned up, I just wonder if that's why. I would absolutely love it if Leo did turn out to be John's pond spawn. And remember, Diana said she lied about it, but maybe she lied about lying because clearly she's a liar. So time will tell. We're also still waiting on the debut of recast Gabby Hernandez. And Nicole is back on the scene as of last Friday. But in case you didn't know it, she will be gone for good in a few months because Days axed Ari Zucker by not renewing her contract. And I do suspect very soon we are going to see the last of that corrupt, shady kidnapping cop, Officer Goldman. Christy St. John should be exiting once her deception is exposed, unless, of course, she dies while doing some of the bad deeds on behalf of Clyde Weston. I think she's doing a good job. I like that they picked a cute young female cop to be the villain instead of some older guy that just has villain written all over him, you know. But I will definitely not miss bad cop Goldman once she's outed as the criminal's inside girl at the Salem Police Department. All right, that's it. I'm super pumped to have Lonnie Price and Eli Grant back next week. No word yet on how long they'll stay, but they're back just in time for whatever turn that Paulina Price's health just took. Sounds like bad news. When she came out of surgery, remember Kayla said it looked good, like they got out all the cancer, but then not long after, She was having issues, and it seems like she is in some kind of imminent and urgent medical crisis. Let's hope it doesn't turn into a life and death situation, and maybe it's just a glitch or a mild surgical complication. We'll see. Drop your comments. Please click subscribe if you haven't, and definitely come back soon, because we are here talking days, seven days a week. And as always, it is Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast. Because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 